Welcome one, welcome all to the celebration of Got Bot True Review, episode 600. Man, 600 reviews. It's been a long time getting here, but I'm so glad that you're here. And we're going to start out and take a look at something extremely small, being this. This is the MicroMaster G1 Countdown. We're going to go a little bit bigger, and we're going to take a look at his base. This is the last of our Autobot bases to look at, by the way. And then we're going to go real big, and I mean real big, and do an update, so to speak, of my absolute ultimate Autobot base by incorporating and seeing what uh, sort of effect it has if we add all of the MicroMaster bases. That being the uh, kind of transports that turn into bases, those combiner transports, uh, the actual like ATV base, and of course this big boy who's going to be our focus this time around in the latest Got By True review. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you are at it, that's right, man, hit that notification bell because it lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. And I'm starting to pull that piece back. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, Transformers Collectors, NL, the Autobot family and have a look for me everywhere across social media and this is Countdown along with his base and I've been loving these MicroMaster bases now we're kinda we're kinda concluding the Autobot side of things here we'll still have a couple of Decepticon things to look at but we're sorta concluding the Autobot side of things here and I thought that I'd save the biggest base for last and this thing is fantastic now Recently, there's kind of been a new resurgence of interest in this because we got an update of Countdown uh, in the Siege line with Omega Supreme. And some people have said, that's fantastic. And they sort of see the relation because this is a rocket base. Omega Supreme is a rocket base. Some people have even suggested that maybe we could get a recolor of Omega Supreme to be this rocket base. I don't know if I'd be in for... Uh, you know, spending Titan class money on this, but I definitely like a MicroMaster version redone and reissued and re-released for sure. This is one of those bases that looks cool this way. It's obviously like a rolling tank thing, but then it's a fantastic base and kind of a beautiful centerpiece to your MicroMaster display when we open it up. And we're going to take a look, of course, at Countdown at the base. We're going to open it up. We're going to see it linked up with the other bases. And then we're going to take a look at the big, huge, overall Autobot, almost Autobot City type of thing now, man. It is going to be Epic. Anyway, without any further ado, let's head over to the table and dive right into this review. And indeed, I said that we were going to go from smallest to bigger to actually bigger and then biggest. And we're going to begin with a simple overall view look at the shuttle base or the rocket base. It depends on kind of your association with it. This base sort of has an interesting history. We'll get to that in a moment, but you will note at this uh, juncture that we have a ramp on the side that kind of wraps around the shuttle. In a lot of promotional material and in a lot of pictures that you see, that ramp is left off and two smaller black cannons, I suppose, are placed in the slots there. That's not the way it's supposed to be. This is the way it's supposed to be, but this isn't where we're starting. No, we're going to start with the smallest. Like I said, the smallest this time around is going to be Countdown himself. And I suspect that a lot of people probably wouldn't know who Countdown is, if not for the fact that he recently got a Siege update when he came with the Titan Class Omega Supreme. Alas, I have not had the opportunity to look at him yet. Hopefully, hopefully I will get that chance. Uh, in terms of updates, 
he also had like a, I guess a release during the universe line as an ultra class figure where like his whole base was like a rocket rolling I don't know I don't even know what you call it man like a rocket rolling vehicle I suppose what it actually was is based on the Russian R-400 Oka mobile ballistic missile launcher and like it's an armored personnel carrier thing like it's it's a big it's a big military-esque vehicle with a rocket but it definitely wasn't true to countdown colored nicely but not true to countdown great toy by the way but it all started with this little guy and this little guy of course turns simply into a moon rover I guess and he rolls very nicely. I say moon rover, I mean I'm tempted to say dune buggy, but I feel like the little satellite piece here makes it a moon rover. So that's, you know, we'll say moon rover, why not? Uh, in terms of the articulation in this mode, well like I said, he rolls great and the little, this little thing can move if you want. I don't know, I guess it's supposed to be back like that. In terms of conversion, as you can probably guess, it's extremely simple where we, that's right, Slip down the legs, stand him up, bring the arms down into position like that, turn him around like this, and you can even flip back the satellite dish thing. And this is what we have. He is a nice little lad. He can get in a seated position. The lower legs are independently articulated. The arms can go all the way around 360. He's one of the better micromasters. And you know what? Honestly, I feel like, though again, I can't speak from first-hand experience just yet anyway, but I feel like that his recent Siege update is probably also one of the better ones. I, I guess we'll see if and when the time comes. Nevertheless, the G1 version of Countdown is pretty fun. Next up, we go a little bit bigger with the Galaxy Rocket, part of the rocket base, which in zone was part of the zone base. Here's the thing, the kind of like, I'll almost say rolling tank version of the base, the one that we saw at the very kind of beginning of all of this, was featured in Victory. It was Star Saber's base and it was the shuttle base apparently. In zone, it was the core basically of the zone base, like the rocket base, the powerful rocket base, was the core of the zone base. For a long time it wasn't clear if the shuttle base from Victory and the, Z and the rocket base from Zone were the same base. But according to ARC-2, I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe, according to ARC-2, yes, evidently, they are the same base, which is this base. And arguably, this is supposed to be gigantic because it was Star Saber's base and uh, Die Atlas's base, so like, I get it. Some people have even said, hey, I'd love for the Titan Class Omega Supreme to get repainted as this base um, and be re-released, you know, in those colors. Um, I, like, I, I get the argument why for scale. I don't know how many people would want to pay a Titan Class price point for a simple repaint of the Omega Supreme mold. Maybe there's a huge market for it. I don't know, man. But I... I uh, that's a hefty price point for really something to just be in scale. When the original toy itself did not scale with those characters, it was intended specifically to go with MicroMasters. And as such, I think releasing a smaller version of that base for uh, like interplay with, say, Siege MicroMasters might be a smart way to go or just re-release this because it's fun. Speaking of the rocket, it's a rocket. It's a rocket. What can this do? Well, as you might well expect, it can transform. There is sticker detail on this, uh, an Autobot symbol. This piece here can open up and there are blasters that fold out. You can put a MicroMaster in here. The lower part of this also splits into and it can go laid down. I'm going to reposition things so we can get a better look. Are we done yet? No, not quite. We actually have a section there that can open up. 
and a section over here that can open up. That's right, the rocket itself can kind of transform and serve as its own little kind of mobile base. And I think that's absolutely amazing. But now, now we're gonna go a little bit bigger again. And we're kind of back exactly where we started. Like I said, this was the shuttle base. It was Star Saber's rolling base, evidently. So yes, it should be enormous, but kind of let's be realistic. It's really meant to function with MicroMasters. So because of that, I think that something about this size still works well. You can see Countdown right here. And honestly, the Siege MicroMasters are about the same size. How did I know that the platform up top uh, is supposed to be there? Well, what a lot of people do is this. They will place those two black cannon blasters up there. But that kind of doesn't make sense if you think about it just for a moment. I mean, this here is an elevator. Right? It can move up and down on like, quite a zipper rail, a loud one too, like a ratchet rail. Why? Why would we have this come up to nothing? That makes no sense. If we had the ramp piece on, then it could move around. Now, to be fair, there are a number of pieces that come with this that I don't see any way to store them in this mode. So he is a bit of a parts former, but it's G1, man. What more would you really expect? And so setting things back as they should be, what can we say about features and functionality in this mode? Well, we do indeed have the uh, elevator that can go up and down. It's a, it's, a, it's a very tight rail system. This piece over here uh, has a piece on top of it that can rotate around. It can also come detached and serve as like a lunar type of vehicle apparently. The cannon section up here can angle up and down. It too can come off. Uh, in fact, I believe a lot of this needs to come off for transformation. And yes, the whole thing does transform. It rolls, well actually, it, it, it rolls fine. I wish that there was a way to kind of secure the rocket a little bit better. Now it does fit down in grooves, like the four thrusters on the bottom kind of fit into thruster grooves, but it's it's sort of a loose fit. Like it's all right. I don't think it's going to necessarily tip over, but I don't know. Maybe it's eh, maybe it's more solid than I think. As I'm rolling it here, maybe it's more solid than I think. Uh, and this blaster thing here, it too can move around and we'll just take countdown off of it. So great features here. What about scoring for this? Can we give any scoring so far? Well, honestly, this base really only appeared um, in one mode or another, depending on if you watched Victory or Zone. If you watched Zone, uh, Victory, I believe you do see this like rolling version of it with these huge treads. Uh, I think, I think that you might see the base more in base mode in zone. So I'm going to say, honestly, I'm going to say that it's somewhere around a 10. Uh, why not? It's G1. <laughs> How can you really say it's not a 10? So I'm going to say, yeah, 10. What about the conversion? Well, I think I'll save that for later. Right now, just know that this is getting a 10 so far, especially for a G1 type of toy. Uh, for the conversion, like I said, this becomes a much bigger base. So we're going to kind of get into that. And perhaps the easiest thing to do is to take parts off first and make things easy to work with. So we're going to remove this for now. And we're going to take this out of it. We will also remove this piece. And really, there's uh, like a uh, I'm going to say 5 millimeter port there and there's a 5 millimeter peg right there that goes down into it and holds that in position. And we're just going to lay that aside. Uh, we will also, for now, remove this piece. In there quite securely after all these years too. I think that that's a testament to how well this thing was made. And we'll even take that piece off. 
And this is sort of our bare bones. This is really where we sort of begin our transformation journey from for this thing and guy. And I'm going to begin by folding down the whole uh, gantry, I think it's called. Is that what it's called? The whole launch piece thing that's next to a, a shuttle or a rocket? I think that's what it's called. It will come all the way down. And this is the one scary part of this. This side and this side are on uh, hinges down here. They need to flip down. So, so tight and scary, but like how well constructed was it? Listen to that plastic. It's thick, it's robust. Um, but again, a bit frightening to do. Bringing it down, you gotta bring that out a bit. Actually, maybe I'll hold off a second. Um, we can open out as well the sides here. And we'll see this better in a moment, but I wanted to do that so that I could lift up after I have those out. Should then be able to lift up this centerpiece, which needs to go unhooked. There, there's a little hook right there that hooks in under a lip right here. You gotta pull that hook out and then get this up. Then I usually find that this is a little easier to get down. Scary sounding though, man. Okay, so it's all open up in its base mode. We flipped out the sides, we flipped this piece up after untabbing that little latch, and we have these sides down. And that's kind of where we're at so far. Let me reposition things because I know that we're not quite where we need to be. And as you can see, this is already getting fairly impressive in its size. We have countdown here, but we have a lot of parts and pieces that needed that need to go attached to this. There's a lot more to this than like one would kind of initially think. So we'll begin with um, this piece here, and this is just one of those. Um, what do we call them? Ramps that we've used on other bases before. Oh, wrong way. Putting it on backwards is not gonna. That's not. That's not gonna help me, man. Getting these on is. Not the easiest thing in the world, man. There, wow! So we have this one over here. I don't know why that was so hard. I, th that was a lot harder than this actually is. Yes, they're a slight nuisance, but nothing like that. I don't know what the problem was. Ramp, I don't know what your problem was, man. Okay, Whew. moving on. We take that same kind of piece that we had earlier, uh, this piece here, and we use all three. Instead of using the like furthest back two pegs, we use all three pegs and they go in here, here, and here, and wrap around to give like an upper, like an upper deck type of thing. And there are little pegs here that I guess you were able to put MicroMasters on, like G1 MicroMasters on. I don't think that they would work for Siege. Maybe they would, I don't know. Uh, but we put that piece in there, and then we have another long piece, and this long piece goes back here, attached to that section. I have to get it attached. And I'm doing it the wrong way. I had to turn around this way. It's very clear how you're supposed to attach it, unless, you know, you're like me and you attach it the wrong way. That comes down behind over there as another ramp. Because of course the Autobots could, you know, drive up here and transform and come out around and, I don't know, use these computer terminals, I guess. We're not done yet. Not even close to being done yet. We also add next the piece up here. There are two peg holes up there. We take this piece and using these two peg holes under here, it fits down right there as, I don't know, command center, I suppose. I don't know. I have no idea, man. Why are you asking me questions that I don't know? Then we have two of these blasters. And they go in a peg hole there for defense and presumably over there for defense. And believe it or not, we're still not done yet. 
You will notice that we have a section here or here and here and here that we can add pieces to, add things to. The rocket base, and I'm saying rocket base, is able to actually kind of serve as a base. And as I say that, I realize that like a lot of people aren't going to understand what I mean by that. Apparently, it's meant to kind of like connect to a piece and be like all one base. You can put this off to the side, wherever, like that if you're so inclined. But I think it's meant to go more like right here. And then we have a section like this that can go on. Now it can go on this side and it's a helipad or it can go on this side or it could go out here or it could go out here. It's your call. My understanding is that ideally this is supposed to go here. But like you don't have to do that because you have a place for a ramp here and a place for a ramp there. And you can kind of do sort of whatever you like with it. Actually, I think I've done this on the wrong side from what I want to do it. Here, we'll do it over on this side. There's a reason for this, guys. There's a reason that I'm changing this. I'm putting it there so that I can specifically have a ramp coming down from this edge out to the front. For now, I'm gonna just, I don't know, here, we'll put a ramp. Put a ramp right there, and we'll put one coming down from the helipad. Which is, I know, out of view there. We'll put it down coming from the helipad, and then the rocket base should be able to go way over here and sort of rest on the helipad. I'm going to obviously reposition this so we can see it better. So in a fairly ideal world, this would be our kind of main base. This is the rocket base. This is the center, the brainchild, the kind of apex, if you will, of the zone base. It is very impressive. To this day, it is still big, imposing, and impressive. And while it should be arguably gigantic, uh, I, I, like, I feel like this is sprawling and gigantic enough it can interact with a bunch of MicroMasters and it can connect to other MicroMaster bases so that we can go even a step bigger again to look something like this. And now we've gone even a step bigger. I did have a couple of things that I had to finish off with the transformation, namely that double barreled cannon out front needed to go attached as well as that red uh, double barreled cannon near the back and that kind of, I guess it's a repair arm. But in the end, we have what I can only call like a MicroMaster, I don't know, town, super base. I hardly know what to call it, but it comes out and it's absolutely sprawling as you can see. And if areas are going out of focus, I greatly apologize, but I'm trying to cover a rather enormous MicroMaster base. And the more I look at this thing, the more impressed I am with it. I mean, look at the, I don't know, we'll call it the center hub of activity that is the uh, rocket base or the shuttle base, if you prefer that name. It is an amazing to this day, an amazing display piece. It stands up. It could be used with modern day figures, no problem. It could be put in a modern day display and fit in nicely. All of these could. These bases are something from the G1 era that I don't think has kind of suffered from the passage of time. If anything, I think all of these bases have been so well designed that they absolutely stand up against the test of time quite well. And of course that brings us to 
how these could potentially interact with all Autobot bases. How does this add to my vision, my personal vision of the ultimate Autobot base? I, every time I think I'm done with that, I'm not quite done and I get pulled back in. But how can you not get pulled back in when something looks this awesome, man? So we're gonna go to the biggest before we get out of here. And as promised, here is what one would believe has to be the apex, finally, of my ultimate Autobot base. We have a mix of G G1, third party, official, Titans Return, Generations, Micro Masters, Power of the Primes. I could go on and on. Uh, now, a couple of these bases, liberties have been taken with their conversions, uh, such as uh, LG42 down there, and Magnus Prime, or Super Ginrai, if you will. You will notice, though, that we do have LG42 connected to Fortress Maximus, and going down the line, we will try and see this better in a few moments, we have Super Ginrai attached to Blaster, attached to um, Quick Switch, but then up a past that, we have the focus of this particular review, that Autobot MicroMaster base, and it is connected to ever so many other MicroMaster bases. Uh, they're kind of using conjunction there with Fortress Maximus. And we have a couple of MicroMaster bases. We have a, a fan mode there for Ultra Magnus. You can see we have the Second Chance Optimus Prime trailer. We have Rodimus Primes back there. Um, we have the, what I like to call, Alpha Trion Citadel. And we have... Uh, Sentinel Prime's base mode. A couple of these, as I said, fan modes, but I think that this is astonishing. This is more an Autobot city than I think anything else. We're gonna see from a couple of angles though. And from here you can see how the Titans Return bases are indeed connected to one another. And I believe that that gimmick of them connecting was borrowed from the G1 MicroMasters, who you can also see now interconnected to each other. I think that the end result is astonishing when you think about, you know, how much something that is old can be new again. And from this side, you can see kind of the backside of Metroplex, as well as many of our MicroMaster bases. And I, like, Again, they fit in fine. They they look they look good with the rest of the bases. If we go in closer from this angle, you will see that we have big powered there. You can also see from a different angle how the Titans Return bases fit together, panning over. We have a fan mode there for um, Combiner Wars Ultra Magnus. You can get another look at the Alpha Trion Citadel mode and the mode for Sentinel Prime. The Omega here uh, is not, um, the Omega here is the Weijiang Ultima Guard. It works for me, but honestly, I don't think of the four iterations, like modern day iterations we have of Omega Supreme, I don't think any of them are bad. I really don't. I think they're all absolutely stunning. And in the end, this, my friends, is what I have to believe has to be my ultimate base mode. And of course, this is just mine. I, you know that there are different iterations of these characters, different iterations of Metroplex, different iter iterations of Fortress Maximus, the same for Omega Supreme. I would love to have these MicroMaster bases updated. They have been uh, amazing fun to revisit. And honestly, I would love nothing more than to, than to also see your ultimate bases. 
And so here we are back with the base itself to kind of clue things up here for episode 600. And I said that the articulate, or sorry, that the, the paint apps were a 10. Even the sticker detailing is amazing still to this very day on this thing. The articulation, man, the articulation is honestly 10. It's so versatile. I mean, I know it's a base, so it's not really articulated, but it has so many points for connection to other bases that it can sprawl and expand almost endlessly, a lot like the siege weaponizers do. And in terms of um, transformation, 10. I know it's all parts forming, but the end result for all of these things is A, easy to get to, and B, absolutely rewarding. As a base, I still think, lo these 30 years later, that this stands up as one of the best play sets of all time. Perfect tens still across the board. And hey guys, we are back here and we have the base and we have Countdown there again. We started from little, we went to bigger, we went to a bit bigger, and then we went to gigantic. Um, I love that base. Now it's only, like I said, it's only one possible option. I'm sure that your base looks different because it's dependent upon the versions of a lot of those characters that you have. If you have the official Omega, Omega Supreme, hey man, he's going to fit in differently. Um, I've seen some great ways where Omega Supreme has been kind of linked up with um, Metroplex. I've seen uh, Fortress Maximus sort of linked up like a huge battleship with Metroplex. Those things look super duper cool. But when we look at this base, it's fun. It can be manned by so many Micromasters. It looks like a base. It has so much playability, so much versatility. This is, or has at least, quickly become one of my absolute favorite G1 toys. Anyway, I'd love to know what you guys think about this base and the little micromasters that we've covered for the Autobots. Couple of things still to go, but they're sort of just add-ons at the end. This was this was our big sort of pièce de résistance, if you will, for our Autobot side of things, and it has been a blast looking at these. You know, I love to hear from you guys what you think of these bases and these little guys. I appreciate you dropping by give me some of your extremely valuable time. Please, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button because you know that it helps me out so much. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, then hey man, there's a donate link down in the description. Don't ever forget that you, yes you right there, you make a difference some way every day. And I very much look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop motion premieres or right here, man, the old fashioned way inside the videos.